I just wanted to do a quick video here. I was going through my scraps again and you know, I use baby wipes to uh, wipe up after myself and I just kind of started tearing this one up for whatever reason, just cause I do that. I like to tear up paper. And I thought this like looked pretty cool. Um, cause it's a non-woven substance. I wouldn't really call it a cloth because uh, it's kind of papery really, but it does kind of tear fun. And I like the texture, it's kind of gauzy and it creates this little uh, cottony, spider webby looking um, pattern to it. So um, I thought, well, let's have a play with this um, and see what we can do. So I'm just kind of tearing some into pieces but I thought, well, what if I wanted it in other colors? Um, what would happen? So I'm gonna try a couple of different things and just see if it wrecks the effect or if it works out pretty okay. Um, so yeah. So I thought the first thing I would try and I think what I'm going to do actually is lay a paper towel or two in here just to kind of make it for easier cleanup. But I thought like if I laid a couple of pieces in here and maybe sprayed them with some spray stain, what would that do? So let's see what we've got here. Now I have got a few I'll start first I made my own homemade alcohol based um, tea stain and cough coffee stain <laughs> colors sprayable they're alcohol based so they're quick drying so let's try these first and see what happens now the tea stain is quite light So that's not super noticeable, but I think it's pretty safe to say you could layer this. It helps if I take the cover off and do both ends. So that gives it kind of a tea stain look. Let's see what the how the brown looks. of catching on the fibers and just sort of beading up there and this color is looking a little more orangey I don't think it's shaken up well enough this is a mixture of several different colors to finally get to the shade that I wanted so well, let's see what those do so I think I'll take that towel and I'll Set that aside and grab another one. And let's grab another piece or two here. Um, and I tore these up this up after it was dried out. It was one that I had been using last night in my studio time. Um, just kind of tearing this up to give it a little bit more interest. Um, I had used this up, used this during my studio time last night. And um, it had laid out on the, uh, on the table. up I have some distress oxide sprays I have picked raspberry and mermaid lagoon so let's see what these do I'm just gonna give that like a one spritz and I'm gonna give this a one spritz 
Okay, three spritzes. And then I'm gonna grab my water sprayer and activate the distress dyes in there so that they can move around a little bit on the fibers. So because of the oxide pigment in there, it's sitting up on top a little bit and it's creating like little splatters. Um, so that's kind of a cool texture too. It looks, this one, this one definitely reminds me of cotton candy. Mostly because of the colors I chose, but also because of the texture of the, of the material. So we're gonna lay that one aside. Just give that one a few minutes to dry. Grab another towel for clean up. Well, I, yeah, I've got two more things I can, a couple more things I can try. Let's see here. I am running out of wipe though, so I may need to find another one. Another dried out wipe. So I'm just gonna, so now, let's see here. I've got a mica stain, distress mica stain. My guess is this is also going to leave splatters on top of it. Um, there we go, mixing ball loose. Sorry about the pounding there. I haven't used this color in a few minutes, so it is, mixing ball is kind of stuck. Give that a spritz or two. Yeah, that's definitely got a splattery look as well. Um, so that's gonna be mica e. This was uh, this was bubbling cauldron from the Halloween from the Halloween set. And yeah, that left splatters on the top um, as well. I wonder what will happen if I just kind of give that a spritz a doodle. Nothing much. It doesn't really do anything much, but let's see what happens if I kind of just do this a little bit. And that also did not do anything much, except I think it actually took most of the dye off of the thing. So I'm just going to give this another spray and let it dry on it. By the way, we'll not be wasting these paper towels. I actually keep my paper towels that are dyed up and grungy in my scrap bin, and I do use them in my stuff. Um, okay, so let's try something else new. I'm gonna spritz this with some water first. That's what I'm gonna do, actually, is to get to my Dr. Martin's. What color should we go with? Um, I have got grass green, regular green, yellow, black, brown, teal, blue, pink, orange, red. Hmm. teal and green. So I sprayed it with water first because that helps distribute the ink. I'm gonna give this a good shake. 
Um, if you're not familiar with these, this is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay ink. This is a water-based ink, but it dries permanent. So it certainly doesn't like wick through the material. So it's starting to a little bit. I'm just taking the paper towel now and kind of patting it to see if I can get that color distributed through that material. If nothing else, I've got these this really nice kind of area of that. No, it's not really doing anything. So I don't really like those inks for this. It didn't really do much. It just kind of <laughs> wah, wah. That's too bad. That was a really nice piece of it too. Bummer. Bummer. So honestly, I think based on what I'm seeing, the best colorant is actually alcohol ink. I think I'm gonna give this a little white and I'm gonna stuff that in the scrap bin and give this a, give this a new towel and let me get out some more alcohol ink um, just from the bottle and see what that does. My selection of alcohol ink, I use predominantly Ranger, but I do have a set of Pinata um, alcohol inks. And I've got this other random one, Brie Reese, um, that I got just to kind of try it. Um, I, for most of my work, I prefer Ranger, but if I'm looking for really, really vibrant colors, I like the Pinata. But for this, I think I'm going to go more subtle. So. I would like to see hmm, shell pink, maybe. See, it just kind of kind of sits. It's on top, so I'm going to spray it with isopropyl 90%, see if that does anything. Give it a pat, pat, pat. And that does seem to help distribute it through the material. I'm going to try I'm getting this small piece. I'm going to try some blending solution. And let's try maybe a very soft green. This is, what color are you? What color are you? Willow.
Okay. Well, the blending solution, putting that on ahead of time and really soaking it in does seem to help. Um, I'm getting some, there's some really cool wicking happening over here. So I think, what if I, yep, yep, okay. That really is creating something kind of cool. Okay, what if I put in another green? Um, this one is, Oh, why do they make this the color so hard to find on these stupid bottles? Stupid bottles. This one's in Spanish. <laughs> I have no idea what color this is. It's green. It's a it's a bright green. <laughs> I have no idea. But I like it. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this kind of over here, just a teeny bit here. that just another little push of blending solution all right we'll let that one rest let's see if we can fix up this pink one this does use a lot of blending solution so this is kind of an expensive way to dye these but with how about some peach bellini give it kind of a sunsetty look and we'll just like saturate this one edge and maybe this one over here brighter yellow. And something just a coral. We're going to go really, sorry, you're not very much in frame here. My, my workspace is crowded. All right, let's hit this with some blending solution and see what happens. I really like what's happening up here. I'm going to hit that with some more. It's kind of like I said, if nothing else, I'm getting some really awesome uh, colors on this paper towel. <laughs> So we'll see what happens there. Put this stuff away. At the end of the day, I might just decide if I'm gonna use baby wipe to either dye it before I spread it apart because that seems to be easier while it's still wet. Um, and then tear it or just use it white. Um, and see how that works that aside to dry and see how we're doing with these other ones. Okay, so this one is almost completely dry. So we've got our, our tea stain one and our coffee stained one. So this, I think these with the sprayed alcohol, um, alcohol sprays that I created, uh, is actually working pretty well just to give them a bit of an antique antique look what was the next one I did um, was it my mica sprays no or these are the oxide sprays these are still wet um, 
I will probably regret this. Yep, it's going all over the place. Okay, did you guys see what happened there? <laughs> it started kind of shriveling and melting. <laughs> Not that I want to, you know, inhale a bunch of crazy chemicals, but if you're careful when you do this, the effect is kind of cool. So maybe that's something you want to give, give a try. Um, I'm going to hit this one with some heat and see what it does. So yeah, it definitely, it shrinks the fibers back up um, and makes it more dense again, but this is pretty cool. Like, we could do some things there. Um, just for, just for grins and giggles, I kind of want to do another one with this um, antique stuff on it. It also does flatten it back out a little bit, um, which might make it easier to use. So I got to say that's that's kind of cool. I like what it does. Um, I may not do that to everyone, but it did turn out pretty cool. So um, Okay, that got smoky. Don't do it with the mica sprays. That started getting smoky really, really quick. But what it did do, because we've got all these lumps, I don't know if you can see that very well, but we do have these lumps of the mica and the dyed fibers. And then it created a really fun pattern. So I think those are kind of cool. Those are a little cool. All right, let's see how our... Now this one I think is fun the way it is. So I'm just gonna leave that one. This one, this other one is still soaking wet with alcohol, so I'm not gonna apply heat to that one. I am gonna, however, move it to a different spot on the paper towel um, so that we can color a different spot of the paper towel, but also give it a more absorbent spot to dry. Um, and that's gonna need to dry some more, so but it is looking really cool. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. It's really pretty. It's very pretty, it's very bright. Um, definitely wanna use that as a pop of color. Um, and just so you guys can see here, we've got some, now I've got some fun paper towels um, that I can use. Um, this one. It looks kind of like a mushroom um, on here, but that's fun too. So might add some more dyes to that one. Um, and this one's pretty fun. So it wasn't a waste, even if we weren't entirely successful, but it was a fun experiment. So I'm happy with it. Um, I hope you guys had fun watching this. I. Um, I will make a project with it. I've still got some scraps to bust here, so let's see what I do with them. But if you guys thought this was fun, if you like uh, to watch me just putzing around and playing with stuff and seeing what I can figure out, let me know that in the comments. Um, I'm looking for feedback. What do you guys want to see in this channel? Um, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. <laughs>